Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Book Club. Today, I'll be giving my commentary on Chapter 12 on Robin. Before I begin, I would like to note a few things. The first thing I want to mention is a clarification regarding the wives having to go to hell with their husband should he go to hell in the FLDS version of polygamy and the afterlife. I want to make clear that the wives a man has, if he was sent to hell, they would not necessarily get dragged to hell with him. The women in plural marriage in the FLDS, what they get out of living plural marriage is just to get to heaven. If the husband is good and he gets to heaven and he has the right number of wives and he does it right, he gets the planet with his family. The wife just gets into heaven if they live polygamy. They don't get any other bonuses. If their husband does it well and he has the right number of wives and everything, he gets the planet with his family and all his wives. And they get a place there. The wives get a place on the planet in the higher levels of heaven with the whole family and with the kids. The wives do not get judged about where they will be in the afterlife on their individual merits, based on their own soul, based on the contents of their character and their conscience. The husband, if he gets sent to hell, the wives won't necessarily go to hell with him. What happens is, whether the wives are good or not, they get to free float in the void without their kids, without the rest of their family. They get to float alone in the void without their family there with them, without their kids there with them, if the husband gets sent to hell. So the wives would free float separately alone without each other, without their kids, without their family as the husband is in hell. I want to be as clear as possible, and I also want to thank Diana and her mom for that clarification. The next thing that I want to mention just briefly is I understand that I use in my opinion a lot. And I know some people feel that it's not necessary because obviously we all know this is just me stating my opinion based on highly edited produced clips of a TV show. I do not know these people. I do not know at all what the full extent of their lives are. I am just forming my opinion based on what we see, which is a snapshot that is edited and highly produced, and I bring in perspective from my life and experiences. And that doesn't mean I'm right. Another person can look at this through their lens and their life experiences and come to other opinions. Just because I state my opinion, it does not mean that I am right, and it does not mean I am stating it as fact. And I know I don't have to say in my opinion. I know some people aren't a big fan of that. I know that it's obvious that it's just an opinion, that people assume that it's not fact. However, I feel that it is of the utmost importance to always harp on that and say in my opinion, because I put my content out on several platforms and I know there are people who will take anything as fact, who will assume something is a fact and run with it without doing their own research. So just as obvious as it is to most people that I am stating my opinion and that maybe it's superfluous to state that, I will always state it because just as natural as it is for most people to assume this is obviously an opinion, there are just as many people out there who will take whatever they hear as fact. And just because something seems very obvious to one person, one should never assume others will assume the obvious. So as silly as it may seem, I will always incessantly drive home in my opinion. Next, I want to mention something that really struck me. I was watching a documentary on Army Hammer, and his great-grandfather was Armand Hammer. And in that documentary, Armand was described as the embodiment of ruthless ego. Who does that remind you of? The embodiment of ruthless ego. That reminded me so much of the ramen-haired prairie king of the Plaguelands. It's simple, a few words, the embodiment of ruthless ego. But to me, it really encapsulates that man. Okay. Now on to chapter 12 on Robin, our favorite ghoulish goblin. It's almost Halloween. How funny would it be 
if Robin had a sense of humor and she dressed up like a goblin just to troll. She already has the eyebrows down. Robin never lived with her sister wives. She didn't have that shared history with the family and that shared history with her sister wives. Let's remember that Mary, Janelle, Christine, and Cody were together before the kids arrived and the kids grew up with Mary, Janelle, Christine, and Cody for 16 years before Robin entered the picture. So Robin was spared a lot of the tensions with adjusting to each other, learning each other's quirks, and figuring out how to raise the kids together. Robin avoided all of those problems. Now, Robin lived in her own home when she married Cody, but she still integrated into the family. She helped with the kids and she contributed her paycheck to the family to help pay the bills. Her paycheck from doing what exactly? If she means the paycheck for filming, all the other wives were contributing their filming paycheck to support themselves and the family too. And they also contributed from their other employment. Plus, they contributed with their roles in the family. Robin did occasional after-school babysitting for a few hours here and there. She wasn't really contributing financially at all as much as Janelle or Christine or Mary or Cody by any stretch of the imagination. She didn't have any other employment. Robin worked as a single mom to support her kids before this. So it was always up to her to handle things financially before entering the family. Money was tight, but it was good to have others to count on, Robin says. Others to count on or others to be a liability to. When Cody made his big commission and he used it to pay for Robin and her kids and their separate rental and their whole existence, and Janelle pitched in too, and Robin no longer worked or contributed financially other than the money from her tax return and her filming paycheck, the wives all had to work in addition to filming. Christine had a part-time job during a high-risk pregnancy at this time. She was overwhelmed as Robin sat on her ass, not adding to the family's finances, only taking from the pot as a liability when the family's resources were already stretched so thin. I wonder, would Christine have had to work her part-time job during a high-risk pregnancy amidst all her other responsibilities in the home if Cody's commission from that sign went to the family and the family budget rather than to support a woman and her kids when she could continue working to contribute to either pay for herself and her kids or at least to contribute to the family resources. And the filming paycheck doesn't count because everybody contributed that. Everybody was also contributing additional money from their employment other than Robin. Robin worked before Cody supposedly, so why not after? Why did all the wives have to work in addition to filming but Robin? In my opinion, her filming paycheck does not count. All the wives and Cody also got paid for filming collectively, and they worked. All three wives worked other than filming. So I want to know, why was Robin exempt from that? There were times when Cody couldn't cover the mortgage, so the wives had to band together to make it happen. If times were that tough and the squeakiest wheel got the grease per Cody, where if a kid had holes in his shoes or if a kid needed braces, they would have to pester their dad to get him to help. So if it's that bad, why was it okay for Robin to sit on her ass and not work like all of the other wives did? Would Christine have had to work when she should have been resting during a high-risk pregnancy if Robin worked to cover her own ass? Or at least if she added to the family pot like the other wives with additional employment? Would Christine have had to work if Cody contributed his commission check to his wives and kids? Janelle offered for Robin to move into her section of the Lehigh house, and Robin refused. And I understand that. It's awkward. She wants her own space. But knowing Janelle, knowing how Janelle seems, knowing Janelle's personality over the seasons, for her to offer to allow Robin to stay in her home, in her personal space, she wasn't doing it for shits and giggles. 
She probably did it even though it would be the opposite of her personal preference because the finances were so tight and she knew it was not affordable and that having Robin have a separate rental would definitely affect the family's financial stability. Janelle didn't want Robin there. She wouldn't want her there, but she invited her to move with her and she welcomed her as awkward as it would be and as much of an annoyance and a huge burden as it would be on Janelle to have Robin in her personal space. Janelle offered it and I don't think Janelle would have offered it and meant it unless she knew it was for dire financial reasons. And still Robin rejected it. And I do understand why, but I think it's about the finances. And Robin knew the family's financial situation, and I don't think she cared that she was a liability stretching the resources even thinner without contributing as everyone else worked other than filming. If Robin could work before marrying Cody, why not after? If all the other wives had to work, why not her? She expects us to believe that she was able to pay all her bills and her rent or her mortgage, and she was able to pay for her kids and her groceries, her car, everything. But when she married Cody, all of a sudden, she could not work. I want to know why. I know she got her filming check, and so did the other wives. So did Cody. And everyone still had to work in addition to filming. But Robin, bringing in three people and not just herself, didn't work. The fact that she could sleep at night and she was fine with the Browns taking the financial hit, that she was fine with not contributing with even just a part-time job like the other wives, that says a lot about Robin's high morals and standards. Was that in the best interest of the family? Was that in the best interest of the group for Robin to refuse to work and not add anything other than the filming paycheck, which everyone already contributed? to the family's finances when everyone else worked but her. Robin says it was wonderful that her sister wives and Cody had her back financially. Did she have their backs financially since money was so tight? Robin says moving to Nevada made them more of a team. I find this interesting since Christine felt she wishes she left Cody back in Vegas. And she said that Cody stopped doing fair and equal time all the way back in Vegas. That's when the family dynamic shifted even more greatly. But Robin says here in Vegas, they became more of a team. Everyone had to contribute financially to relocate the family. And now they work as a team financially because they have the show. They all split the money evenly and they help each other out. So again, Back then, when all she did was filming and the other wives did filming plus their jobs, Robin was only pitching in her filming paycheck while everyone else in the family had their filming paycheck plus their employment to pitch in. But Robin. Robin says working as a team financially and filming together has unified them and evened out any sense of financial inferiority or instability that any one of them may have had previously. Now they are all equal. Robin was not financially equal to them. She had thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of debt for ridiculous things like Victoria's Secret. She had different aliases and all kinds of financial issues when she came into this family, allegedly. She was financially equal, as she puts it, because other people in the family were covering her ass. Her filming paycheck is what everyone else already gave, plus more, because they all had other income coming in. Everyone but Robin, who was saddled with debt and only contributing the filming paycheck, with no other employment to speak of. She just wants to say they were all financially equal to feel better and to make herself look better when the reality is she had not only tons of debt, but she also only contributed the filming paycheck, and so did everyone else, but everyone else also had separate employment, and they pitched in that income, and she did not have other employment, but she did have other debt. Robin says the show gave them all financial equality, and they were also able to be more open 
and attend things for their kids in public, like school events. If Robin could, she would go to every school event. Was she not the one who showed up late to the graduation of one of the older kids in Vegas? She claimed she had the baby, she couldn't park, she disrupted the whole thing, she was super late. I remember it vaguely, it caused a disruption. When Dayton had his graduation, all the moms came and Christine got there early to have seats ready. Do you guys remember when Cody said Christine refused to be there to be a good mom for Robin's kids? Here, we learn that she came early to Dayton's graduation. Not only that, she saved seats for everyone. Robin says a benefit of plural marriage is that when she can't attend an event for her kids, she knows one of her sister wives can be there. Dayton had a school play once and she and Cody were out of town. And again, Christine went to the play and so did Mary. So Christine is a bad mom to Robin's kids, but she got there early and she saved seats at Dayton's elementary school graduation. And while Robin and Cody were away, she was able to attend Dayton's play with Mary, but she's not a good mom to Robin's kids. It's exciting for Robin and her kids to be a part of the Brown family. She loves that her kids now have lots of siblings around. The other kids go to Robin's house to search for food. The brown kids regularly forage for snacks at all the other houses. And Robin saves leftovers specifically for this reason. She also keeps popsicles and ice cream in the freezer to save money on the ice cream truck. How generous and giving this woman is. Do you guys remember when she bit Isabel's head off for having a small bowl of cereal and milk after school because it was just supposed to be a snack? Robin lets us know she doesn't eat a lot. In fact, she struggles to have an appetite. But she and Brianna are hypoglycemic, so they always need snacks around just in case. Other than the family's Friday night dinners and Sunday potlucks, they don't get together as a group often for meals. They don't often grocery shop together. They coordinate big family meals together and for birthdays, the mother of the child will host the birthday and make the child's favorites. And sometimes a child will make special requests of their other moms for their birthday. Robin gives the example that Gabe wanted Mary's mashed potatoes and gravy for his birthday and Mary was more than happy to oblige. Robin says she will feel special when one of the kids requests her food for their birthday meal. Has that happened yet? Do they beg for her bomb lasagna or bomb cheesecake? I don't think so. Of all the wives, honestly, if I had the munchies and I really wanted to eat well, I would go to Christine for sure. And I know she's technically not a wife now, but I would still pick Christine. I was impressed since season one when I learned on one episode she made fresh hamburger buns and she made streusel for the kids for breakfast on the show. And now that I have seen her amazing cooking show, I'd want to raid her fridge. Robin says the only rule she has when the kids all hang out are that visiting kids can't interfere with her kids doing their homework and her kids can't hang out until their homework is done. The younger girls like to chill at Robin's. Cody calls the five of them the Pixies. They like to have sleepovers over at Robin's house at least once a week, or there are complaints. As far as parenting the other kids, the only time Robin will assert herself is if the other parents aren't around. She will correct the child's behavior and enforce her own rules if their mom isn't there, but she doesn't do child rearing with the other kids, especially if their moms are present because it's not her place to interfere with how another mom raises her kids. Because of this, she hasn't had any conflicts regarding parenting with her sister wives. She won't interfere with how another parent raises her child, but she won't hesitate to accuse her sister wives of influencing the kids against her when that's a false accusation. 
She said in the tell-all last season that the moms, mainly Janelle and Christine, influence how their kids feel about her. And she mentions it very often as if the kids can't see what's going on and come to their own conclusions based on what they see and experience. Keep in mind that the kids Robin refers to are all in their 20s mostly, and they're old enough to use their brains and their eyes to register, process, and think critically about the reality of the situation. And they have fully formed frontal lobes too. So that's not the issue. They aren't weak-minded kids being spoon-fed by their mom's opinions. If Robin really knew the family and she really knew the kids, she would see by now that they definitely seem like intelligent, mature, free thinkers. They don't seem like sheep to me, but Robin seems to underestimate the kids and she likes to throw them under the bus whenever possible, especially Gabe and Garrison, I've noticed. And then she wonders why they don't take her calls. Robin says she's usually comfortable letting her sister wives help to parent her kids. When they go to another mom's house, Robin always makes sure her kids behave so another mom doesn't feel like she has to interfere. Robin feels like she is slacking if she doesn't handle her own kids. She keeps tabs on her kids' behavior when they are at another mom's house. If the kids visit another mom's house without her, she encourages that sister wife to tell her if her kids are misbehaving. All the sister wives have different parenting styles, but they all have the kids' best interests at heart for all the kids in the family. Does Robin have the best interests at heart for all the kids in the family though? It seems like any child in the family who complains that she is the favorite or that their mom isn't getting the same time and investment as she is, that she has a problem with that child. And rather than admit the truth, she calls these kids liars. She says these kids make false accusations about her. She suggests that the mothers intentionally influence the kids to believe she is the bad guy. She calls their moms liars, gaslighting them, suggesting they think Cody isn't being fair with his time and that that's not true. And they just perceive that that's the truth when it isn't the reality. And the reason that they perceive that as the truth when it's not a reality is because they struggle with Cody, so they only see the bad and they only see the negative and it's not true. If Robin really has the best interests of the kids at heart, she wouldn't be so quick to slam them and call them liars and call them out because she is more concerned with her optics and how she looks and she is more concerned with spinning the narrative to be the victim and the outcast who is bullied and accused and unaccepted. The family scapegoat as she claims her mom tells her she is. And so she has to throw the kids under the bus to do that. And of course, Robin selfishly prioritizes herself and her own image and her own self-interests over the larger family and the kids. So the other moms have the best interests of the kids at heart. But I don't know about Robin. It seems to me that Robin has the best interests of the kids at heart when it's convenient for her and when it serves her narrative. Anyone feels differently about Robin than she does about herself, their best interests get torpedoed by hers. By the way, bad-mouthing Gabe and Garrison and some of the other kids on TV, calling them liars, calling them wrong, trying to paint yourself as a victim, bad-mouthing their mothers, deflecting and enabling Cody and his toxicity by suggesting the reason Cody is at your house is by default because of the other wives decisions placing the blame on the wives for why she gets more time and they get less because they refuse to be controlled and held hostage in their homes does robin think that is in the best interest of the kids that that is in the best interest of the wives that that is in the best interest of the family that that is in the best interests of the family's health and the relational dynamics. When Robin gaslights the wives and enables Cody and his bad behavior, justifying his abusive tactics, when she calls the kids liars who gang up, 
Does she think that's best for the family? Does she think that helps the kids and Cody and Cody and his wives have better, stronger, healthier relationships? Or does it only make things more toxic, more complicated, and worse than they could ever be? Robin says she is all about the family, but her words don't match her actions. She may have close relationships with some of the girls in the family, but does she always have the best interests of all the kids at heart including Gabe and Garrison. Does she always have the best interests of the whole family at heart? Robin writes, I'm more prone to talking things out. I want to learn about the kids' feelings and try to understand why they are acting out in a certain way before punishing them for their behavior. I know that I'm overprotective and overly gentle. I stand up for the underdog. Does Robin seem overprotective and gentle with all the kids in the family? Does Robin seem to stand up for the underdog? With Isabel, she scolded her very intensely for having that bowl of cereal. She overreacted as if Isabel should feel ashamed and cereal was not a reasonable snack. What if Isabel had food issues? Is it gentle to scold her like that on camera? Is it gentle and overprotective the way that she handled the Thanksgiving situation? She felt rejected because she is a nut and she doesn't seem to have the ability to think critically and separate her emotions from the reality of a situation. She creates a narrative in her head and she runs with it based on her emotions. And that's all she can see. Remember how she framed the Thanksgiving thing to her kids? She spun the narrative that they were being rejected by the family and she voiced that she felt rejected that christine janelle and the kids would not be attending her thanksgiving this obviously was not personal they did not reject robin at all christine and janelle had older kids they wanted to go see their older kids and their older kids could not follow cody's protocols so rather than not be with all of their kids just to go to Robin's, they chose to be with their kids and do a Thanksgiving with all of their kids. They weren't rejecting Robin. Their kids could not all go to Robin's house. And naturally, Janelle and Christine want to be with their kids. It wasn't at all a rejection. It was a common sense decision. And Robin framed it as a rejection to her kids, getting them riled up and emotional for no reason when that wasn't the truth. Is that what an overprotective, gentle mother would do? What about how she took time out to specifically mention that Gabe has a girlfriend and a social life as if that's why Janelle isn't coming? She specifically mentioned Gabe when explaining to her kids why the other moms and kids weren't attending. Because Robin felt rejected, she wanted her kids to feel it too, when they weren't rejected at all. The whole thing was emotionally manipulative. It was abusive. It was a misrepresentation of what the reality was and what the facts were. And it was really fucked up also to Janelle and Christine and Gabe and the rest of the kids as well. It definitely was not a rejection and it, it definitely was not overly protective and overly gentle in my opinion. In fact, it was the opposite of that. Also, what about Robin not allowing Isabel to hang out at her house during her recovery after surgery? Isabel really wanted to see her dad. She wanted to see her siblings. And the nanny was allowed into Robin's house, but Isabel was not allowed at Robin's house. Why? COVID isn't an excuse and neither are Cody's rules. This girl wanted to see her dad. Why was she not allowed and welcomed at Robin's house? That doesn't seem overprotective and gentle. It sounds like not all of Cody's kids get equal access to Cody. Robin gives the example of McKelty to explain how gentle and overprotective she is. She says McKelty doesn't fit with the other teenage girls. She gets teased, she's independent, she's creative. Robin sees the best in McKelty and she stands up for her. Robin doesn't tolerate bullying from the kids not even in minor ways. She wants all the kids to be nice to each other and she favors a calm and peaceful home environment. Robin writes, I try to bring a sense of respect to every family gathering 
and every situation in which I'm dealing with a group of kids. I expect the kids to be responsible and considerate, so I try to lead by example. I ran into a few issues with my position as a parent with some of the older kids when I first came into the family. I don't think they were ready to accept me as a mom. It was strange for them to all of a sudden have someone new parent them without any history. We had some issues with some of the kids because of this. I think every blended family deals with similar problems. I thought at first that my sister wives would just insist that their kids look at me as a mom, but I've realized that it is up to me to claim that role. I have actually had to reach out to the kids and build a relationship with them independent of their biological moms. Respect is earned, not demanded. My parental relationships are getting better and better with time, but it's still a work in progress. What Robin did with the kids, calling some of them liars, and what Robin did gaslighting the wives, claiming they perceive Cody as giving them less time and it's false, and like they just perceive it because they struggle with him. If that's an example of Robin's sense of respect that she brings to the family and that she brings to the kids, she doesn't understand what respect means. Cody perceives that obedience means respect and loyalty when obviously that's not what it means. So Robin probably misperceives what respect actually is as well. If she feels she leads by example as far as being considerate and being respectful, she really needs to consider that she herself was in an abusive marriage and she claims that she knows what it feels like to get less than she deserves, that she understands emotional manipulation, verbal abuse, she understands gaslighting, she understands what it feels like for someone to continually tell you what you experience in reality isn't the truth. And yet she herself gaslights the wives, suggesting what they experience in reality is not the truth. She is suggesting that the wives getting less time than her or that she is favorite wife or that she gets full investment from Cody when they get much less investment from him, that all of that isn't true. That the wives just perceive it like that because they are in a bad place struggling with Cody. If Robin is so considerate and she brings a sense of respect in, in more than just her words, her actions would show that and they don't. If that's Robin leading by example after what she herself has been through in her first marriage, and that's her sense of respect for the family, dealing with the family, it leaves much to be desired. Robin mentions that she had issues with some of the older kids. She expected the other moms would just insist that their kids look at her as a mom. You can't demand that people accept you in that role just because you marry their dad. You have to earn that trust and respect over time and through your actions. You can build that bond through actions if you have the right intentions at heart. You cannot demand that place or expect to be a mom, expect to be a parent to them. You cannot feel entitled to be a mom to these other kids just because you married Cody. It sounds to me that Robin expected the moms would command the kids that she was their mom and it would just automatically exist without her doing the hard work. The kids did not marry Robin. They did not choose her. Cody did. And if she wants to be seen as a parent and she wants to be seen as a mom, she needs to build those relationships over time. She isn't entitled to be seen as the kid's mom and have a parental role because she married their dad. It's interesting that Robin says she realized she had to claim that role, meaning when she entered the picture, she just assumed it would be gravy and she wouldn't have to work hard at it like she was entitled to it just because she married Cody. She can't assert herself as a mom. She has to earn it over time with her actions. It seems to me that Robin came in feeling entitled, like just because she married Cody, the sister wives would talk to the kids and command them, Robin is your mom now, end of story. And that's problematic that she realized after marrying Cody, basically she wasn't entitled to it, it wasn't a given. And that shows just how out of touch with reality this woman is. She seems surprised that she had to take initiative to build relationships. 
when she says she actually had to, when she writes she actually had to take the initiative, like she felt entitled to come in and automatically be a mom, she seems like she wasn't expecting to have to build relationships, that she would just be a mom and be a parent to these kids upon marrying Cody, like she is entitled to it automatically, just based on marrying Cody, that she would automatically be a parent. And that's how it feels to me, like she was surprised that she actually had to do work. Robin thinks maintaining communication about the kids is important for the family to grow. They have lots of kids in different stages of life. Her kids are the youngest, so Robin hasn't had to deal with teen dating yet. She still gives her input though, so the family can set rules for dating so that all the kids can be on the same page as far as what the dating rules are. Robin loves to interfere and put in her two cents even when it has nothing to do with her kids, whether it's about dating and her kids are nowhere near old enough for the dating to pertain to them. And Robin also got involved in the youth group conversation when that also didn't involve her kids at all. She made the situation worse and more confusing for the kids it did pertain to because she suggested that the kids could not pick their own religions or do their own exploration until they were 18 and their frontal lobe was fully formed. The frontal lobe isn't fully developed at 18. And Robin created much more stress by interfering because the issue is the Browns have taught their kids all their lives that they can choose what they want to believe in and that it was allowed. And then Robin came in and she contradicted it, confusing the kids and causing more stress in that conversation. Robin mentions that she has life experiences that she can share with the kids to help them make better decisions. Wow, like for example, the horrific purity talk she gave where she blamed the other person for her decision to have sex and she put all the blame on that person for why she made that choice rather than accepting the accountability that she made that choice herself and that she has free will and she has her own mind and her own thoughts. No one forced her. She made the choice and she blamed the other person who is the bio dad of her kids. During that speech, she made her kids feel almost as though she regretted them, in my opinion. It was all a mistake as she framed this story in front of the whole family, bashing the bio dad and blaming the bio dad for why she made the choice to lose her virginity. It was horrible, it was cringy, it was disturbing to hear her frame her experience this way in front of her kids. And that's the type of shit that she wants to share to help the kids in the family. I would say, you know, she should refrain, and if I was a sister wife, I would ask her, you know, please refrain from telling my kids anything <laughs> personal about you, please. Imagine how the bio dad felt. Imagine how her kids might feel looking back with the way that she framed that experience. She didn't take any accountability for her choice. Robin feels that it's up to the other moms and Cody to enforce the rules for their kids. And she feels blessed that her kids have many mommies and the best dad ever. They also have their bio dad too, but Robin seems to rewrite history and discount their biological father every chance she gets. For Robin, Cody is a great dad and he makes his time count. Her kids used to ask when they would get a new dad before she ever met Cody. Dayton benefits from having a guy around and Cody is very patient with him and Robin's girls adore Cody. She says the way to a divorce mom's heart is through her kids. The children are never alone with five adults who love them and lots of siblings. They have a strong identity and a permanent sense of where they belong. It's as demanding on the kids as it is on the adults to be part of such a big family. The kids can't be selfish and they can't put their individual needs ahead of their siblings. Robin's kids have had to adjust to sharing more with their siblings. An example Robin gives is Aurora had to loan out a book to one of her siblings and she wasn't so fond of that idea. She didn't want to 
And Robin reminded her, they are a family, they have to help each other out. Robin says, the family is a team. It can be a challenge to the kids and a challenge to the adults to remember that, that the family is a team. Does Robin remember the family is a team and she can't be selfish and put her individual needs ahead of the larger family? Does Robin hold the best interests of the whole team at heart ahead of her own interests? It's interesting to me that both Robin and Cody seem to be telling their kids to do things they do not do themselves. For example, in a past episode, Cody says he wants his kids to take accountability for their choices, to own them. Yet Cody consistently takes no accountability for his part in anything. He never acknowledges his faults and he always deflects, yet he expects his kids to own their choices. With Christine, he said he wanted Christine to admit that she is leaving him because of her own behavior and her own choices, and not because of anything that had to do with his behavior. He wanted Christine to accept all the fault for leaving him, but he expects his kids to take accountability to own their choices when he never does that. Robin also seems to have a do-as-I-say, not-as-I-do issue herself. She wants the kids to not be selfish and to understand they can't put their individual needs ahead of the needs of their siblings. Is Robin unselfish? Does she put the needs of her sister wives ahead of herself? Or does she prioritize her best interests and enjoy her favorite wife status as she deflects and blames them as the reason she gets the majority of Cody's time and investment saying it's just by default that Cody lives monogamously at her house because the other wives' decisions, meaning them not accepting for Cody to dictate how they will live, prevent Cody from giving them equal time. Robin and Cody both talk an awful lot. They want their kids to have values they don't have, and their words never match their actions. It's do as I say, not as I do. Maybe if they did less talking and more action, they wouldn't need to sit on national television disparaging their family to make themselves look like the victims to try and spin the truth to their advantage. It takes less effort to take the right actions than to do the wrong thing and try to cover it up with lies and empty words, putting others down to try and push yourself up. It takes much more effort to convince people what they see with their eyes is a lie, yet what they hear with their ears is the truth, even though what they hear and what they see clearly contradict each other. Instead of all that talking and putting the effort into a manufactured narrative, why not just act right and put all that emotion and effort towards behaving well and doing the right thing so that when you speak words, The whole room isn't filled with the stench of the bullshit spewing out of your mouth. That does it for this episode. To my YouTube viewers, please like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments section if you like. I'll be back soon with the next episode of Sister Wives Season 17, Episode 3. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.